has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future! Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently anchored, yes, anchored until further notice above Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference. But yes, of course, we're going to talk about some other stuff before then. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues which proposed that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, uh, then you're looking in the wrong dark corner of the internet. It's easy to find. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and if it is not Tuesday night, right this second, and you try to call in to the phone number that I'm going to give you here in a bit, you will get voicemail. That does not mean that I won't listen to it. It just means that you're not going to be able to talk live on the show. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery, truth is the most powerful thing in the world since even fiction itself must be governed by it and can only please by its resemblance. That's by Anthony Ashley Cooper, the first Earl of Shaftesbury. A little highbrow, don't you think, there, Peanut Gallery? A couple announcements before we get to the phone lines. Uh, Jeffrey Grupp challenge is still in effect. The uh, last one fell through. And anyone in the academic world that wants to challenge Flat Earth, anyone. I've got a big brain waiting on the sidelines, waiting, waiting to be put in. To, to take out whoever's coming up against him. His name is Jeffrey Grupp from Zeteticism.com. I, of course, will debate anybody, you know, if, if you ask for me by name, but I promised Jeffrey I'd give him first crack in the next one. The Flat Earth Big Money Challenge, sponsored by Zen Garcia and Friends. Zen Garcia is also on this network on a show called Secrets Revealed. If anyone's interested in that, if anyone thinks they have an academic that wants to make, I think it's over $20,000 at this point, you can prove the globe. Without a shadow of the doubt, 100%, $20,000. And I think it's probably even higher than that right now. You can email Kathy Dunson, and her email address is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. That's perelandra77 at gmail.com. Flat Earth Conference, of course. You heard that at the beginning of the show. I'm going to keep talking about it until it happens. That's not until November. I'm not going to talk about it all the time. But I'm going to run a trailer on my channel every week, and I'm going to mention it on this show every week. That is November 9th and 10th in Raleigh, North Carolina. A lot of cool Flat Earth people are going to be there. If you want all the details, go to FE, that's F is in flat, E is in earth, 2017.com. And you will see all the information, including the hotel. In fact, uh, you can I, if I do what I did in this case, and I booked my hotel already. And they're, they're not, of course, going to bill you for the hotel until November, but you might want to lay down a credit card for it because the closest hotel next to it, I think, is three miles away. 
So there is a flat earth meetup in Colorado, Fort Collins, this Monday, the 10th, at the Purple Cup Cafe. That's at 6 p.m. Uh, for details on that, you can just go to my channel and you'll see all the email information there. And all you have to do is type in flat earth meetup. And you'll see the Flat Earth Meetup Colorado. It's not going to change. From what I hear, he's going to run it every week, which is great. They had like over a dozen people this first time. Came from all different places in Colorado. So fantastic. Good for those guys. The phone number to call in tonight is the same as it was before. 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by. And by that, I mean me. Since you don't have to go through a producer to get to me, be nice. Don't troll. Because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. And I believe that karma is a real thing. If you had special goggles, you could probably see it. So, I, And honestly, I don't generally, I think I've what, had what, one or two troll calls. And this is show, I, I don't generally mention this. This is show number 99. So next week will be show 100. And I'm thinking I'm going to be doing that from the States. And Peanut Gallery chimes in and says, show highlights. You might sing during the show. No, it's I'm not going to sing during the show. Oh, 561 area code calling in. Let's find out who it is. You are on live with Strange World right now. Where are you calling from? Who are you? What are we talking about? Hello, this is Phil McKenzie from Toledo, Ohio right now. Hey. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Pretty good. I just wanted, I was wondering if you were like still interviewing people at random if you could get i think his name's glenn he does flat water flat earth and he has like a whole bunch of stuff on the hyperborea or the north pole like different people who went took voyages there and their stories and it's really interesting and it like ties right into the whole hollow earth flat earth thing cool he's like a brilliant presentation on it but Uh, all right i just wanted to mention that you're right (laughs) Yeah, sorry, I was stretching. I just wanted to mention that, and uh, have a good night, man. Uh, hey, uh, and, and by the way, if you if you're in touch with that flat water guy, just have him have him shoot me an email, and uh, we'll we'll talk and do it like a pre show thing. And sure, why not? Sounds like fun. Right on. Right all on. right, hey, I'll make an effort for it. Thank you, sir. All right, have a good rest of your evening. You too. Bye. All right. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And as you know, if you don't call in, I'm going to punish you with emails from other people. So this first email is called Question. Love the generic ones. Come up with creative titles. If you're going to email me, come up with some interesting titles. You don't, you know, nothing super weird, but something that I can... I can rattle off on on the show. This starts with, Dear Mark, I have never heard any flat earther question or suggest that the arch that the sun takes every day, whether in summer or winter, always moves from the northeast towards the southwest at sunrise and then back towards the northwest afternoon till the sun sets. If the globe earth theory were correct, would not the arch be in one direction when we were leaning towards the sun in our summer in the northern hemisphere and then opposite in our winter when we were leaning away from the sun? This guy's obviously a three-dimensional thinker. In our winter, it would be as we see it all the time now. But in our summer, it would start rising from the southeast towards the northwest till noon, then go back towards the southwest until sunset. And this email is now saved by a call, 778 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Who? Hey, it's Daryl Crosswell calling. How's it going, man? (laughs) Daryl Croswell from Canada? Daryl Croswell all the way from Canada. Hey, guy. <laughs> yeah, der hey. <laughs> I, I missed that thing in the Nimo you guys had. So uh, I just thought I'd uh, call into your show and try to round up some uh, troops and we could have our own maybe on the other side of the water. I don't know. Maybe. I might be up for it. Sure, why not? In fact, well, I, I, there's, there's a guy... Any- there's that guy from Ladner, and there's now there's the guy from Chilliwack calling in, and um, like I know that's not exactly like a five minute bus ride across town or anything, but like there are people around here now. Oh heck, which... I'd 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 go to it, sure. In fact, I've already had a um uh, another person. In fact, I've, I should probably email her back. 
that, that was disappointed that she couldn't make it the, to the Nanaimo thing and wanted to do something in Victoria sometime in the summer. And I said, oh, oh sure. yeah. Why not? That sounds like a lot of fun. Plus, I'm sure we're going to do at least an, at least one more Nanaimo thing before the um, the conference. Yeah, well, I was thinking there'd probably be more going on. I just, uh, I was like, last week, I was like, damn it, I missed like a really good time because I had to work, basically. They called me in for the weekend. Oh, no no worries, man. But it was, I was, it all was fun. I was to go for the day. Yeah, and like, I didn't, I was going to take the ferry and then not drive, so I could actually, like, <laughs> you guys, lose the You guys have quite a bit of ferries, too, because I didn't even realize as I was driving up there that there's a whole bunch of ferries, you know, between... Oh, yeah, especially if you're in Vancouver, you can, like, ferry to Victoria, you can ferry... Oh, yeah, and just keep going north, and, yeah, it's, it's it was great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, yeah, did you, did you, I saw you commented on that guy that showed up at the Albuquerque, New Mexico City Council... <laughs> that was so cool. That was today, right? You posted that. Well, no, that was what. Well, yeah, I posted it today, but it was yesterday that the guy did. Do you know who that? I and I didn't. Somebody immediately, <laughs> Bob from Globusters. You know who that is? Who is that guy? That's the guy. That's the guy who's from Infinite Plane Society. Oh, really? Yeah, that's his channel, Infinite Plane Society. So and for those of you who don't know what, what, what happened, this guy went into the Albuquerque City Council meeting and with the open forum, then he had a couple minutes to talk, and he talked about the, the fake ISS missions and fake NASA missions. But what was interesting was he introduced himself as me. So, oh, so I that, thought, because he, what well, I just watched it like 20 minutes ago, like I just left my desk to come out in the hallway at work. Yeah. And um, I watched it like just now. And he's like, that was Mark Sargent. Yeah. Like as if you were on before him or something. Yeah. Like, no, like, I don't know. Well, I guess he obviously thought that there'd be more hits if your name was dropped. Or I, something. Just, I don't know. Or maybe he was trying to be anonymous or, or, you know, making a little nod to me, which was great and all. But it was, I, I was. Hey, anyone wants to do that? Anyone wants to use my name, can pass off as me? That's fine. I mean, I've been on video enough that I don't think anyone's going to mistake me for somebody else. But even though those Yoda guys are probably making like tons of cash off you, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. I, I, I will say this: somebody finally told me what the ratio is of of YouTube hits, and apparently. If you can get about a million hits, if you're monetizing, it's about a thousand bucks every million hits. So, you know, if you have 10 videos that have 100,000 hits or 20 videos that have 50,000 hits, that's a thousand bucks, uh, which means I've given away thousands of dollars. <laughs> I mean, the, the two, the, those two big videos alone, I've given out five million hits. So, it's like, ah, oh, crap. Anyway. Well, it took it took people our age a while to figure out the internet and money. And oh it. well, I, heck, I didn't monetize <laughs> for the first fifteen months. I didn't. I threw. I left money on the table. Huge amounts of. Well, I shouldn't say huge, but <laughs> significant amounts of YouTube money. In fact, it was YouTube. The, they were the ones that finally contacted me and said, "Are you sure you don't want to monetize?" And it's like, <laughs> why? Well, and, and because apparently it was. But it, you did though, right? I did after fifteen months. I, I did. <laughs> well, but but mostly because it increases traffic. When you monetize, you you, um, you get more traffic anyway, because YouTube then you know puts more sponsors. You know they put you in higher the higher pecking order. So oh, Jesus! It, YouTube the monetary monster. system at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, any, uh, uh, any anything else you want to throw at me? Oh, God, like tons of things I think about all week, but then I get on your show and I'm like, oh, just get off, get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. but um, basically, if anyone wants to get in touch with me to meet up near Vancouver, like I'm not like, like so I'm yeah, right yeah, in there, but give, like, give you know, whatever. Your, okay, I am S-E-E-I-N-G-S-O-U-N-D. Seeing sound at gmail dot com, and I'd like to do like that guy. Yeah, correct. Okay. And it'd be awesome for it to be a regular thing, you know, because uh, it's a little bit uh, lonely for flat earthers around here. I don't but. think it's as lonely as you might think. I think there's a lot of flat earthers out there. They just haven't gotten together. Look at the Colorado group; they're apparently going to do. 
<laughs> we're just another not one armed this week. yet. So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, I like that idea. And, I'll, and, and um, I, can, I can put together little templates pretty quick. So if somebody wants to organize a meetup in their state or city, I am more than happy to put a video on my channel. If you want to make the video yourself, that's fine. I'm also, you know, you've seen what I can do. Is I can, I can whip out a, a, a quick video in two seconds. And all you, all you need to do is give me the details, and I'll throw a couple slides in there, and, and that'll be fine. Oh, but, cool. But I'd love, I'd love for people to get together and, and uh, you know, keep, keep this thing, you know, growing and growing. So. Yeah, uh, well, that's exactly what my, uh, my perspective is, too. And obviously you're invited because it's pretty close. Okay. Um, but as soon as there's, like, a date, and um, I'll, like, uh, get... I'll get an After Effects thing going, but if I could use your channel to get people to come, that would be, <laughs> you know, awesome. Right. But awesome. Whatever. Um, yeah, uh, just thanks a lot for answering the phone. That's nice to talk to you again. Oh, very happy. Uh, I have my hotel and flight and uh, conference ticket, by the way. So. Right on. Right on. You know, every moment between now and then is just a little bit of torture, but... <laughs> I'm sure I'll make it. <laughs> no, nah, it's gonna be a blast. I I can't wait. It's good, but I'm glad I'm glad you're going. Any any, yeah, sh- uh, any shout outs yeah. before I uh, send you off into the night? Uh just me and New York Mark are gonna have a have a shot at the conference and nice. a call out hello to Eric Dupe. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I had to do it. I hate it. All right, him. all right. You gotta, you gotta okay, go because I got another call coming in. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Two six nine area code. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are we talking from? Hey man, it's Reverend Shane again calling in. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, what? what's going on, man? Oh, you know, little little flat Earth. A few emails, some phone calls. Mix it all together, you get a show. So what's um, sure. what's what's going on with you? Well, I talked with one of the elders yesterday who happens to be a scientist with a degree. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And he was he, we were discussing the heliocentric model, and we were going back and forth, and he was hitting me, you know, peace, 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 and I was batting him right back, 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 yeah. and it was awesome. <laughs> Great. That's, isn't that unusual, though, to have a church elder to be a, a – is he a, like a current scientist or retired? Um, he's he's not even affiliated with the church. He's a he's a current scientist. He works in the industry, so obviously I can't give out his name. Okay. Um, but uh, but I will say that he works for a major company, and um, he does some really cool stuff. Uh, frankly, uh, according to my opinion, uh, my humble opinion, anyway. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But you were you were smacking him back like a like a tennis racket. I was trying my best, man. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Everybody's got to start somewhere. It come, it gets easier with time, because the first time, no. the first, your first reaction when when a scientist comes at you with stuff is you want to, you know, bludgeon them. You want to find something around around you, like a lamp or a a crutch, and you just want to beat them with it. But it's okay. I mean, you know, they they, they were like you. They were the, the, the same mindset that it's not real. It can't be. It's ridiculous. And you're stupid for even thinking along those lines. I was I was there, too. Exactly. I start I started the conversation out with that. I said, hey, I thought it was crazy at first as well. And um, uh, eventually he brought Einstein up. And so uh, the, the Morgal actually recently inspired me. And um, it has to do with the elliptical orbit around the sun and how if, if Einstein's theory of relativity is true, then it affects time. And if it affects time as, as far as an elliptical, then that means that time itself would be an elliptical. So, therefore, it, um, it, would, it would warp um, time, possibly. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, so that doesn't that, that doesn't really add up in my own you know in my own thinking and physics in mine. Um, so I don't know how that would work, and and he, he did not have a, quite an answer. So interesting, interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he himself, he was like, he was like, this this conversation is 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 far from over. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into this. Excellent. <laughs> did you did you recommend anything? 
And, and it doesn't have to be me. You don't have to lie to me if, if you didn't. No, actually, you know what? I, uh, hopefully this is okay because I know you've said it's Creative Commons previously, but I went ahead, I, I put your clues onto a disc for him so that because he's one of the elders, he can just pop that in his DVD and check it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding? Anybody, if they want to put the clues on a disc and DVD and sell them on the street corner, pff, fine. All right. at, this, at, this, <laughs> at this point, I've given away so much so, I mean, most of the exposure, you don't understand, I still get emails every week from people that have watched those two documentaries, uh, my, my clues that were posted on other channels. One was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. The other was called Under the Dome uh, Full Documentary. Both have about two and a half million hits each. And Yeah, yeah. You were just talking – yeah, you were just commenting about that. Yeah, so anyone wants to put my stuff in a DVD, pff, have at it. You have fun with that. So – Cool. As long as it gets the word out, I don't care. It's uh, you know that, I, and I think a lot of the other people in, in the community feel that way. Uh, not not all of them, of course, but a lot of them. Like, look, use the work. I mean, it's all about getting the message out there. And if if somebody you know decided to make DVDs and start putting them in people's mailboxes or doing mass we transfer uh, mailing you know emails to people, I hey, whatever you can think of, to feel free. I mean, again, my stuff is Creative Commons license, which means you can. I've already signed off on it electronically. You can do whatever you want. You don't even have to ask my permission. Well, it's well, it's it's, it's very kind of you, of course. Obviously, eh, I mean, again, it's it's a uh, it's the greater good. I I want this community to 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 come to uh, the you know the conclusion that I hope it's going to come to. Which is you know, that we're gonna? It's gonna turn into something great and wonderful, and this world's gonna have a a chance it didn't have before. Yeah, yeah, you know, a, a chance at uh, being able to wake up to their own senses, even yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Any uh, anything else? Oh, uh, nothing else except that the moon changed from east to west for me from the last season. So, uh, I, I, you know, nobody's going to explain that away. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Yeah. Any, any, any shout outs you want to do? Uh, shout outs to Keizu, shout outs to Patricia, and of course you, Mark, and um, Morgyle for inspiring me. Um, and um, I guess I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that for right now. All right. Well, hey, you have a good rest of your evening, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. All right. Looking forward to the rest of the show. All righty. Talk to you soon. All right. Peace Bye-bye. out. Bye. Phone number to call in number. is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That phone number is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. Will I make it through the first email? I think I might. We're gonna try. Uh, after this guy goes about southeast and northwest quite a few times, he goes, uh, let's see here. This is the first time I heard you say you were raised a born-again Christian, though I'm sure you probably have said it many times. I also wonder why you took what seems to be a politically correct and seemingly agnostic viewpoint when you reference whoever designed or made this place we are in. I'm paraphrasing. And not just give credit to the God of the Bible where most of the accurate descriptions of the creation can be found. Also seeing that you stated in this video that the Flat Earth has brought you to... I'm still never going to finish this first email. 980, area code, 980. 980, you are on live with Strange World. Who are you? What are we talking about? It's Candy from North Carolina. Candy! And, and North Carolina, which means you're, you have no excuse to miss the conference. Oh, no, I've already bought my tickets so after they came out. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. So what's, uh, you got like three minutes to the break. What do you got? Oh man. I want to I, I met another flat earther this weekend. Like it was, I don't even know how to explain the feeling that it was. I said, I'm not crazy. Like it was, it was incredible. Awesome. Was it just, was it just happenstance yeah. or were you just happen? No. Uh, well, I'm in a group on Facebook, um, for the Charlotte area and he came to Charlotte to visit and, put it on Facebook. Hey, anybody want to hang out? And I was like, no way. I'm not up until the very last second. I was like, okay, I'm going. And I, I don't think we could stop talking. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's, a, that's so positive. And yeah, everyone should do that. Everyone should go out and, and put something out there and say, look, looking to meet another flat earther. Absolutely. That's great. I had my son in the emergency room last week and the guy, and it was like a curtain dividing us and the guy next door, he was watching stranger things. 
And my son tapped me. He's like, Mom, he's watching Stranger Things. I said, hey, you watching Stranger Things over there? He was like, yeah, I watched some weird shit. I said, no, nah, I'm a flat earther. You don't have weird stuff over there. He's like, so am I. So it's like there's so many of us out there. Awesome. That is, oh, I've said that warms my heart because, yeah, there's there's so many closet flat earthers out there. And you don't know who a flat earther is. It's not like spotting any other demographic. You, uh, right. you you just don't know. So that's that's super. That's great. I'm I'm so happy for you. I hope I hope you meet more people. Yeah. Then we went we went to the mountain Sunday, and I have um, the NASA Live shirt I got from ODD, and I had it on. Well, yeah. we passed somebody who had almost the same. It was a red shirt, mine's pink, but his was faded, so it looked the same as mine. But he had the NASA shirt on. We past each other nice he but his like, but his, his was a straight up nasa shirt and yours was nasa right. wise yep that's great you know that's my that's my license plate like, i can't wait for it to come in that's awesome yeah i i emailed you that the other day that was i don't know why but how come everybody else gets a jpeg and i didn't gets a what the jpeg the remember i sent you the license plate that i ordered the other day the nasa live did you send me the nasa oh well, Oh, oh, because oh, the, I I know what you mean. So you ordered the NASA Lies license plate, which I couldn't believe. You know what? Let's let's do this because we're gonna go to break here in a second. Let, can you stay the three minutes through the break, and we'll pick up right after? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Stay stay right there, and then I'm gonna see how much of this email I can read before the music starts. Probably not long. Okay. Um. Also, seeing that you stay in this video, the flat Earth has brought you back to spirituality. I expect you are trying not to turn away viewers before they had a chance to look at the facts, because so many Christians are such bad representatives for the love of God they say they believe in and supposed to emulate. Uh, me included at times, I'm sure. Maybe you could add some veiled statement of faith at the end of those who do not follow. And there's the music. Nuts. All right. Anyway, stay with me, okay? We'll be back in three minutes. Yeah. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four, and this is show 99, as I mentioned earlier, which means next week is show 100, and we still have candy on the line, right? Because we got 99 problems, but a globe ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. <clears throat> so... Uh, what the reason why I, I want to catch it is because I I'd forgotten that you sent me that email where you got the license plate for your car call and, and you used all seven letters and you chose NASA eight. lies. It's eight letters. Eight letters. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, NASA lies. I'm sorry, that is eight letters. And <clears throat> when you when you chose it, well, first thing I was amazed because usually they will not let you get away with negative things, but when I looked at it. Right. <laughs> I don't think they understood. Now, did you have to put down the reason? It, it, it no. varies from state to state, or did you just put down the letters? No, it just it gives you like a um, and there's actually two backgrounds I could choose from. It was um, first in flight and um, first in freedom, and I chose the first in flight because the whole flight thing. It was just like sure. a double, you know. Even though it was an airplane, it was just still not just as they were the first in flight into space. So. Um, no, it was they, they give you like a simulator license plate in it with the background that you choose, and then you just type what you want on it, and it tells you this is available. Do you want to order it? And okay, that's nice. it. it was green, but, and but I they, hate it. But they didn't give you a screenshot or anything for you to use. Still there? And I have to wait like five to six weeks for it to come in. It said, "Well, they, they give you that much, but generally it doesn't take that long." Like they, they said that with me up in Washington state when I got it's flat 
and I think I had it in under three. So oh, I, I think they just pad it so that if, you know, you know how the government works, it's like, you know, right. up, up to six weeks, but I've seen it way sooner. That way you can't get mad if it's late. If they say two weeks <laughs> yeah. and it takes three people to just complain. And so they say, you know what, it's going to take six weeks. That way yeah. you can't get mad if it shows up in four. So, but anyway, I'm glad that they, they let you do it. I was really amazed. But when you press those letters together, the first five letters of NASA lies is nasal. And so whoever was double checking things probably saw it and said, oh, maybe there's some, you know, could, could be a doctor. I don't know. But whoever who specializes in, in sinus issues, I don't, it, it's a stretch. But they're really, they're really sticklers about not doing negative things. A, yeah, a lot of people said that. They let you do that? Yep, they did. Yeah, so that's awesome that you got NASA lies. Seriously, take a picture of that thing as soon as you get it. Cause, uh, I will. That's it's I, if it ins, other if it inspires other people to do things with the first four letters being NASA. Hey, great if you can get away with it, but it does vary from state to state. So mm-hmm. that's that's awesome. And yeah, it, you know the you saw the plate thing I've got already. We've got the, the plate collection is really coming along. It's, I see that it's fantastic. You know that's the one why I, I was want. like, I gotta get mine in. <laughs> well, no, you'll get it. I mean, you know, we'll, we're I'm gonna do one every month at least until the conference. And in fact, I might just do one every month anyway and just keep choosing different music. But what I thought was – and I will just for people that, that have been asking. It's like, why can't you do it alphabetical so I can – so I know so I know when my plate's coming up. It's like, all right, fine. I will do it alphabetical. But what I will do though just to make sure that we don't mix the, the Canadian and American stuff, all the peanut galleries said, OK, seven letters, boo, NASA, B-O-O, NASA. Nice. nice. The um, that's good. The um, uh, what I'll do with Canada is any Canada plates will just be in the C's. So uh, it'll be so you'll see Alberta and Saskatchewan and Ontario and British Columbia and any of the others, the the ten provinces and three territories. Those will all be in the in the letter C because it'll just be under Canada. That way, all the states will be, you know, it'll it'll go from from. The C states to all the Canadas, and then it'll move on from there. Just so that you know, that's a good idea. That's just the way I'm going to do it. You know, and I'm thinking about too. Speaking of NASA, uh. before recently, I mean, everybody knows who NDT is and Bill Nye, but we didn't have spokespeople for NASA. We didn't have somebody that has to come out and confirm the shape of the Earth periodically and no keep on. Reaffirming, re, like reiterating everything to us over and over in the public eye. Like when when did this happen? Where did yeah. this come from? Well, just again, just recently, I think this is it's all part of the big plan, which is that we were going to detect this. You could not keep this a secret forever. You couldn't. Not if you were going to give the public. I mean, fine. So they weren't going to give us flying cars and matter replicators and teleporters and spaceships. You know that anyone could use, but. At the same time, they they gave us really high end cameras now, great tele you know great television technology, great internet technology. That stuff was eventually going to lead to where we are now, and that is people right. sharing information. That's the big thing, and that is it's not it's not that people weren't detecting it; it's that now people can share notes e- instantly all over the place right. and and so people it, again it just takes one guy at three o'clock in the morning in his underwear in kansas to find a couple frames look at a place he posts it somewhere and then it, it goes you know the, the fact that we now have a term called going viral uh, it's, right. it's it's fantastic and again the the numbers prove that you know when i when you type in flat earth and sort by upload date today i think it's at 16.6 million and and you're saying, well, is that wow. is that good? It's like, well, Donald Trump comes in at about 17, so wow. we're tracking as much as the most controversial president of all time, in the United States. Yeah, that's that's and speaking something. of technology, um, we actually he had this weekend he has a P900, so I got to look through that. That was amazing. Oh my <laughs> Do you God. know how many people are buying? I, I thought oh Mark's TV story was an exaggeration, but it's not. People are buying those. Really th- not. Everyone that's buying them are flat earthers. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. I said, I look at things so differently now. Like, I'm, I've am i always been a big Nikola Tesla fan anyway, but, like, now that I saw it for myself, it was 
I've seen the pictures, I've seen people's videos, but when you see it for yourself, it's it's a different experience. It's, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right. So we've covered pretty much everything, I think. What, uh, yeah. a, any shout outs you want to throw at me before we. I'm just going to shout out Matt. That's who I met this weekend. He was awesome. But I do want to say one more thing. I want to gather, I want to gather some people in the Charlotte area. And I know that, um, I don't know if you know, who Karen B is, but she, and, um, maybe I don't, I, don't I think, think it was I Robbie's do. wife. Somebody they're they're putting like a southeastern meetup together. There's a page on Facebook. But if anybody wants to email me or call me, then I'm completely open to that because I I can't even tell you. I mean, I'm sure you know the conversation that I've never. Oh been yeah, no, I know exactly. Like, well, throw, okay, throw out your email and be clear and enunciate and also your phone and, and your phone number if you want to. But go ahead with your email. Okay, my email is. Um, Oh, I don't even know. I have to look at it. That's that's really sad. Huh? I just made a new one. I'm tired of saying it. I've been using the same email for a long time, but right. um, I'll just give you my regular one. It's Candy C A N D I Lynn L Y N N E eight two eight at gmail dot com. So that's C A N D I. What's the rest of that? L Y N E. Oh yeah, here's another one. It's Candy Franklin C A N D I F R A N K L I N. 828 at yahoo.com. Candy Franklin, 828 at yahoo.com. Yep, and it's Perfect. Candy with an I. Candy with an I. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and again, if anyone wants – I'm not kidding you. If anyone wants to do a meetup and you want me to help, you want me to advertise on my channel, you send me when the meetup's going to be. you got to organize, of course, where it's going to be. And right. I will put it on my channel, and I will see if I can get you some 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 numbers there. And I mean, he, every, I'll give my peanut, phone number. The too, peanut gallery asks if August 28th is your birthday. Definitely. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 It is peanut gallery. He he works for the NSA. So he's got to track stuff. He's got a quota to make. So you, you better follow me around because I'm telling everybody about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's, that's really, really great. I, anything else? Um, yeah, give, give my phone number out. Cause I, I'm ready to do this. Like, I, do it. I know what's the, your phone the number? Southeast, it's 980-352-2237. One, do it one more time. 980-352-2237. Perfect. And the peanut gallery says that you have the same birthday as him. Yes. I'm 1980. And he, and hers is from 1980. And his is from, he's not going to say, I don't think, because he can't, I don't think. Anyway, that's fantastic. All right. I'm going to let you go, but you have a good rest of your night, okay? You too. Bye. All right. See ya. Okay. Will I be able to finish this first email? I'm going to try. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Maybe you could add some veiled statement of faith at the end. So those who do follow Jesus might catch a subtle reference. Uh, Peanut Gallery says 1970, by the way. A subtle reference that will spur them on more without putting those off who seem to abhor Christianity and may have experiences with fake believers that give them good reason. Darn it. I'm never going to finish this thing. 845 area code. I think I know where that's coming from. And that's the great state, the Empire State, if I'm not mistaken, of New York. Hello, New York. Hello. (laughs) Oh, there you go. I thought I lost you. Hey, Mark, it's Mark from New York. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> How are you? Seriously? <laughs> I must have been you're nervous. Like, you're, like, you're acting like a brand new caller. Hello? Uh, am I on? Funny. Am I on the air? Too funny. What, uh, oh, what's that's going great. On, I, don't, I don't want you to get through that email. That's why I called. I, I, knew, no. I knew. I think people are doing that right now. It's like we're, no one's going to let me get through this first email. I, I'm going to actually uh, have to I'm, I'm going to get through this thing. I don't care if I have to, like... To like just put somebody on hold, I, but anyway, what's uh, oh, what's, uh, what's happening in your neck of the woods? Uh, not much. Been uh, thinking more and more about the damn fake fake X stuff, and how are they going to pull off? Everybody from down here should be able to see it with a telescope. Are they going to pull that off? Oh no, no, they're still going to launch the rocket. It's it's, it's still yeah, going to be a real rocket that's going to go off. Right, but it won't. We could see the moon from here. Is what I'm saying. We oh, would see oh, that object it all the way around it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, good point. So uh, yeah, you'll be. Able they're going to gonna have a big issue. Oh, d- dude, there's so many. Th- you you've heard. Oh yeah, things. you're right. There's no way. 
the, the problem with the SpaceX program, the, the proposition they put out there, is that cameras, really good cameras, are so cheap now, they have no excuse. There should be absolute, unedited, continuous footage from the pad to the moon and back. It's just hard drive space. It's not like it's taken up any room. And, and they should have it from multiple angles. And it should be streaming on top of it. Fine, you know, if, if you can't stream it, you're going to have it by the time you get back. There is no excuse. And, and you're saying, well, what's the big deal? I'm saying, well, the big deal is it's never happened in the history of fake space programs. It's, it's, never, it's never ever happened. So <laughs> The history of fake programs, I like that. <laughs> the history of fake space? I mean, seriously, yeah. it's it's never happened. You're you're talking about different angles. There's so many things that are missing from the fake space program in terms of camera footage. You're gonna you're basically saying that you're gonna solve them all in one mission. And you're gonna do it several years before NASA said they were even going to attempt it. Uh, whatever. It's it's never oh yeah, by the way, a quote from the peanut gallery is from you, for you, is okay, the scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. And that was from Nikola Tesla. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Thought so. Interesting. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. He's, he's got all sorts of uh, good ones out there. The, I, um, I got one for you. What? What do you got? Few men during their lifetime come anywhere near exhausting the resources dwelling within them. They, there are deep wells of strength that are never used. Hmm. You know, I, I think what he means is that we have it within us to get out here like candy was just, I, I just dialed the number so I could call her sometime. I, I think that's awesome. She's just going to go for it. Yeah. Go for it. That's, yeah. And I think maybe it's time. Maybe uh, it's time uh, I, we I think it is. There. Like, there's, there's, so oh, many, there's so many people out there. By the way, go ahead. that was Admiral Byrd. Oh, Admiral Byrd said that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, Mason or not, I, I, I definitely respect the man, the, the things that he accomplished. You know, I mean, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's... Either one of two things happened to him. Either they knocked I, – I'd like to think you know, the, the, the better of the two. Either they knocked him off because they knew he wasn't going to keep his mouth shut during press conferences because he didn't seem to be you – know, that, that one where he was on the, the long jeans chronoscope, he definitely didn't keep his mouth shut. Yeah. Or that he was, he was taken out of here as a part of the ambassador program. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the kind of <laughs> It's like, well, he was the yeah, one who that, discovered it, so he gets the option of leaving if he wants. Boy, that would yeah. be a great. That'd be that's a happy end. Definitely, that's definitely the PG version. But yeah, it's probably more the other version. Yeah, that's the one. That, I, 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 I believe that. That's the popcorn version versus the the tragic <sighs> version, which wins awards. So yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree with Candy, and and again, there's so many people out there. The the degrees of separation are already there, meaning. You probably already know people – there's people walking around you right now that believe in it, but they don't know how to approach you because there's yeah. no identifier. You know, it's, again, it's not like Fight Club where you see someone with a black eye or a bruise yeah. and it's like, oh. Well, Maybe right, I could God. put a black rainbow on my car. Maybe that will mean – maybe that will tell them. <laughs> hey, we're, we're working on uh, some sort of – I was going to – I don't gonna know. The pin for the, the conference, you know, like a little – uh, enamel little enamel pin you could wear on your lapel or something. Uh, by the way, he's, gotcha. he's got a second quote. Uh, okay. What what the use of having ignorance if you can't show it? <laughs> and that's from <laughs> that's from Lou Lou Costello. Nice, nice. <laughs> oh, very nice. Nice. Spe- speaking of Lou Costello and Mavin and Costello. Um, I wanted to mention, if it's okay, yeah. uh, I got contacted by uh, one of your experts, the Master Gunner, back from show 45, I believe Oh, cool. Was, awesome. Last year, 16. Yeah. And we've been talking, and I got to say, he's a brilliant man. Oh, my God. Well, the, Ma- Master Gunners things, are highly respected. I know yes. That. The things in that, in that gentleman's mind are incredible. So we've been talking, and I mentioned that kind of how the scene seems to be evolving in the sense that 
I have, you know, saw maybe one or two live streams. Now you go on during the day and there's 20, 30 of them, yeah. all different things. A lot of flat earth, but all different things. Oh, so and there's we a, talking. there's at least a flat, there's a flat earth. There's one or two streams, ha- live streams happening at any given time on flat earth. Yeah. Like Saturday, yeah, I think I'm, there were five or six during the day. And yeah. it was incredible. Uh, it, it, yeah. So now, now we're competing for slots. I'm, I'm like, like uh, Wes from Flat Earth News. He was trying to do a, uh, you know, do a hangout. And I'm going, dude. There are two channels right now. Both have over ten thousand subscribers. They're running Flat Earth things right now. Oh yes, that was Sunday, right? Yeah. It's like, there's no way you're going to yeah. be able to do this, you know, and, yeah. and get anybody yeah. on there because you're not well, live anyway. So right. You don't know. You're right. You're right. And the, and there are only a few sweet spots, you know, you don't, you want to get. Yeah. But what I was going to say is that uh, the master gunner and myself, we're going to try a, a little show here and we're going to work on. It's basically going to be fact, fiction and theory. Awesome. And we're going to try and see if we can discern the difference between them. Perfect. And maybe open a few eyes and help people to learn and look at the information themselves. Great. And we're uh, again, our I've... first. Our first little thing will be Thursday night. Uh, we're going to do it at uh, either 6 or 7 p.m. I'm not sure, depending on our schedules. But we're going to try it out, see what happens. Is that 6 you know. Eastern? Uh, yes, uh, 6 Eastern. Pro- right. We'll probably go with 7 p.m. Eastern, give him a little more time because he's uh, central. All right. Well, I mean, that's, that's not a bad night because Jaron – you, well, you know, I mean, we've. I mean, there's full blown shows that happen now. On, I mean, there's Jaron's got Mondays, I've got Tuesdays. Um, Globusters has Sundays. Patricia has Wednesdays. Right, and right. those are just the regular ones, not the not the ones that just pop up out of nowhere. And it's it's amazing the the amount of stuff. So I will be traveling to the states on Thursday. So, Very nice. uh, but I I will try to check in if I can. Awesome. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. And I, and, I, and I just want to encourage people to chime in. We, we want to be interactive with the, with the chat room. We, we want to be more interactive with the chat room than most shows. Because not, and not that we complain about it because we discussed this, yeah. but we like that some, you know, some shows do that. They're, you know, they, they reach into the chat. Some shows don't touch the chat at all. Right. And we want to talk to those people because we find that there's a lot of good points and there are actually quite a lot of people out there that I think they have something valid to say. You know? I so agree. We want to try and, and, and touch on them too. I or, agree. Or, well, the... Maybe I won't word it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So how, <laughs> tell people how they can find this. So it's going to be Thursday. Um, it'll be Thursday night, either 6 PM or 7 PM. I will pull, I'll put up a, uh, um, event before that. So you'll know, okay. but it'll be on, uh, live stream from Zulu One. Do you know what you're going to call it? Uh, uh, yes, it's FFT fla- uh, Facts Fiction Theory. And Good. it'll be an open discussion. And we're going to, like I said, that, that man's brilliant. And honestly, I feel at the, re- the um, Adam Costello reference, honestly, I feel like I'm going to be Lou Costello to his <laughs> Abbott because the man is brilliant. I, and, and I just enjoy picking his brain. Nice. I think the audience will like it. That's great. No, he does. He does have a lot of ideas. And if you don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about one of my subject matter experts, the the master gunner from the uh, United States Army. So, yes, that's great. I don't. I don't know if you're using awesome. his real name awesome. or anything, but uh, no. Right now, we're going to go with Master Gunner. I mean, he said he's not hiding. He's willing to come out and talk. But you know, give baby steps. Baby steps. No. I... Pff. Trust me, I know exactly what you mean there. That's great. Right, I, right. I'm, I'm happy for you guys, and and I hope hope it does well. And you know, whatever Absolutely. I can do to help, I, I'm more than happy. Excellent, excellent, definitely. Thank you. We appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. And Master Gunner, again, I appreciate him the knowledge, just being able to get it from him and be able to share what I can. You know, with the uh, at least a, a, a remnant of logic when I pass it on, you know? <laughs> sure. It, it, it just, it'll be good. It'll be good. Cool. I think people will enjoy. Great. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. Man. Any, awesome. any, anything else you want to, uh, uh, yeah, I want to say what up to Vancouver. I can't wait to, for him to buy me a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl in Vancouver. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I yeah, again, that's awesome. 
Yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, the energy is going to be it's going to be so it's going to be so different from any other thing that's ever been done in the conspiracy world. Because, you know, all yeah. the other conspiracies are most – let's put it this way. They don't even have conferences for the other conspiracy No, topics. no. And well, like you said, it would be too dark. Everybody, would. Oh, you know, I'm bummed. Oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> the alien yeah. stuff, some of those people were upbeat. It was, it was kind of fun, you know. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I can't can't wait. It's gonna be a blast. But but yeah. So this Thursday you're gonna do your first first hangout. Can't wait. Uh, I will try to. Yeah, well, I, I want to. I think we need to evolve and start being out there live with everyone else. Uh, hey, it looks that's, why, that's, that's certainly seems, do it. certainly seems like that's worth leaning. So yeah. there's a lot yeah. of hangouts. Well, heck, Globebusters now. I mean, Globebusters has what fourteen, what fifteen thousand subscribers. He has a thousand. He's breaking about twelve hundred live people. Watching yep. watching his show every Sunday, and you're saying, "Well, twelve hundred oh isn't that much." Joe Rogan gets like twenty thousand. I'm going, "Yeah, but this is flat Earth. This is a show yeah. called Hello. Globusters, and you know <laughs> that's <got> UFC. <laughs> there's there's people out there that would kill for a hundred people to watch their their live Absolutely. stream, and Globusters Absolutely. isn't even the, trying, and they're they're the getting cat flies by so fast. It's oh my god! It's and sometimes it's impossible to keep up. Yeah, because <laughs> it's. Everybody, you're right. There's, and and I'll be honest, it's mostly people in favor. There's a few yeah. a holes to come in, but even them, they, you know what? We were there too, so you know they they're pretty good about letting them run. You know, give them enough rope to hang himself. I think that's but, why the I think the climate has changed. Oh, in, in the last mm-hmm. thirty days, that's why when David Weiss and I were doing that thing on Paranormal Radio. When it was supposed to be hostile phone calls. I mean, that's where the whole point was to bring us in and, and let us be punching bags. And nobody called because I, the climate has changed. It's not like you can just call and ridicule it now. There's it's for whatever reason, people it, we've, we've worked our way, I think, into the second part of this, which is, OK, people are kind of pausing that they're they're they don't know what to make. They're squinting and looking and going, OK, what what's happening? No, like the like the sportscasters. When Shaq came out, sportscasters are going, okay, why is this a ta- why is this happening? It's not like you can just make fun. You, you can make one of fun, uh, this person, this person, but then all of a sudden you get enough people. It's like, wait, this group, they're organized? What's happening? So anyway, we got about uh, 60 seconds to the break. Anything else? Okay. I, I just I remember Stanton Friedman's thing. This is a thing? Oh, yeah, that Stanton, Stanton Friedman, thing? 10 minutes into my debate, <laughs> where he pauses, he goes, wait. Wait, you're talking about like like this is real? Like it's not a metaphor? <laughs> flat Earth isn't a metaphor for something? No, it's real. Uh, it's flat Earth. That's fantastic. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I got my ticket paid for. My room's paid for. Right I can't wait. Can't cool. wait. I, I'm, and it's funny. I know people have been breaking my stones about me buying a VIP ticket and stuff. But I'm curious. What you know? What what is that? Do we? Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping we get to meet you guys. I'm sure. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You'll, meet you'll, you guys. Uh, there, there'll be all sorts of fun things. Check out, check with Robbie to make sure. Yeah, I don't think he has it all worked out yet, but it's yeah. Gonna be, I mean, yeah, we, you definitely have all access. So anyway, yeah, yeah I mean, we are, we are. Oh, and Robbie right. Davidson just writes in and goes, "Happy birthday!" Actually, Skype. Oh, it's not my birthday. Skype. My birthday isn't for three weeks, but Skype says it was today. <laughs> Stupid That's Microsoft. Right. All right, anyway, Mark. We, got, we gotta go. You are you're awesome. I love it. Keep up the good work. And Thanks, man. my God, man, you gotta slow down on the videos. My notifications are going crazy. Uh, I I know I gotta slow down, but things keep happening. <laughs> anyway, we'll it's be back. Awesome, awesome. With more keep it up. World. Keep it up. Thanks, Mark. You're the man. See you back. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Circus to see our industry.
Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. The peanut gallery says, I liked him best in Blazing Saddles, and I think he's talking about, uh, was it Slim Pickens? Is that the, the actor's name, the guy that rode the atomic weapon all the way to the target in Russia? I think it was Slim Pickens. Anyway, we had a phone call come in during the break, uh, 734 area code. So are you there, 734? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, where are you calling from? Uh, Michigan. Right on. What are we? What are, what are we talking about? What's on your mind? Do you wait? Do you know you're on the air, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I was listening to your last one. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, Katie Franklin sent me. Right I was on. wondering about the whole flat Earth thing. Like, I, it's like recently popped up, and I really have no no clue about it. Oh man, it it well if you saw it recently you probably caught it because of the whole NBA basketball connection with Kyrie Irving and Richard Jefferson Richard Jefferson, Draymond Green and Shaquille O'Neal. Uh but before that it's been going on, it's been picking up steam pretty steadily since the beginning of 2015. And then the beginning of this year it really it it caught it caught off kind of Caught on at the beginning of 2016 because B.O.B., the rapper B.O.B. And, and Neil deGrasse Tyson got into a rap battle about it. And then at the beginning of this year, it just took off. I mean, really, really took off. So, but yeah, it's it's an absolute real thing. And uh, again, you know, this, this, this show, this podcast that we're on right now is just one of many that are out there. And if you want more info on it, you know, just the easiest way is literally go into YouTube and just type in flat earth clues. And then, you know, that's, that's a pretty good intro to most of the stuff or just type in flat earth and you'll just get a wall of information. I mean, you will not, if you get into this, you, and I warn you right now, if you like your sleep and you like your normal life and you know, you're going to lose a whole bunch of sleep. Just the only recommendation I can give to you is if you get into it, do not start telling all your friends that you're into it because they will look at you like you've got a big bug on your face. And, you know, I've, I've seen I've seen people get really – it polarizes people because we're – again, the, the reason why people get so worked up is because they – we're conditioned since we're – since we're children, uh, the, you know, the, the globe is put in your classroom when you're in kindergarten or first grade or whenever you start. And it's literally there every year until you graduate or whenever you leave school. And it doesn't take that long. And so if you get if you make it through high school, 12 years, that's it. You are absolutely believe in the globe. Doesn't matter what you pictures of space, you, you know, you've seen. And you got to remember that and not to go off on a rant here. But you got to remember that NASA didn't even put out the first picture of the Earth from space until 1972. But for 450 years before that, we all were told without a question of a doubt, 100 percent that the Earth was a globe. So how? How how did how did we know this? And everyone will come back and say, well, science told us. It's like, well, did science tell you or you just remember the globe in your classroom? Because nobody knows the experiments by heart. And that's kind of how we we're, where we are right now. It's well, heck, we got a conference coming up, an actual flat Earth first time five hundred years flat Earth conference going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's un, unheard of. I, 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 if somebody would have come to me two years ago and said, "Oh yeah, by the way, you're going to be one of the uh, keynote speakers at a flat Earth conference in in 2017," I would have looked at him and said, "You're insane. Go double up on your meds." But Anyway, well, sorry, that's my that's my rant. Any uh, anything else you want to throw out? There? Um, well, I, I know NASA is the world's largest magic show. I know that for sure. Um, like I'm deep into the truth, but I, I'm still having you know questions about between the two. Yeah. 
And, you know, I appreciate that. Uh, Caddy Franklin was the one that referenced me to call and ask you about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not going to be – if you're new to this, I'm not going to convince you. I mean, if you, if you and I sat down for two hours – I don't think I could convince you that it's a globe. But what I could do is put enough of a a seed in your head. I would give you – if you treat it like a court case, you know, where there's a prosecutor and a a defense, I could give you so much reasonable doubt in the globe that eventually you'd have to – and I'd I'd end it with this and and what what I'll do with you right now. It's like, look, do not take my word for it. In fact, you can watch the clues and other people. Do not take their word for it. Do your own research. Ask your own questions and see if you can con- prove to yourself that it's a globe. How would you do it? And then start looking into it and see if after you've done enough, you know, and once you're satisfied with the amount of research, did you convince yourself it's still a globe? And to my knowledge, anybody that goes down this road, they can't. They, they get to a certain point like I did. Again, nobody goes into this thinking that it's a great idea. In fact, I thought every, every flat earther thinks it's the worst idea of all time. But once you keep digging and keep digging and pulling on strings and, and loose threads, you end up in the same place. Everybody ends up in the same place and that is, holy smokes, it never was a globe. We, we, we never it – was, it was the greatest street magic trick of all time. It was a sci-fi movie that, that we just happened to be living in. And we've, 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 we've made movies along these lines anyway. Sorry. That's, I could talk about this forever, but unfortunately we just don't have the time. Any, anything else you want to throw at me? Um, no, that's about it. Well, so far this is, uh, there's this, uh, YouTube channel that I follow called enter the stars. Oh, is that still, is that still out there? Enter the stars. Yeah. Yeah. He does videos all the time. Okay. And he said that what really got me thinking about it was, you know, a convex lens. Yeah. And if you think about the human eye, that has a convex lens over it. Sure. Uh, over, you know, the retina. And, you know, that just got me thinking, you know, what if that actually means, you know, flat earth and just encrypted it into our bodies? Very well. Well, yeah. I mean, the... Let me, let me end it on this because eventually I will have to take some more calls. There is something that I – when I did Flat Earth Clues 12, I talked about how human beings were almost if – I, if I had to take a guess, an educated guess, I'd say that we were designed to believe illusions to where – you've probably done this. If you've ever been like – it doesn't have to be in a car but a car usually helps or a train or a plane where you're in a car and you're in stop and go traffic. And then all of a sudden, the car next to you is moving, right? But you don't know yeah. if, if you took your foot off the brake or he's going forward or back. You don't know what's happening. For a brief second, you freak out. Or if you're on a train, you know, and there's another train going by you really slowly, you don't know if that train's moving or you're moving. The university studies have been have done along these lines, and they determined that human beings absolutely cannot – they were terrible at relative motion determining it. We don't know – we can't tell, which which is why we're so susceptible to illusions and simulators. Same reason why some people, when they watch a roller coaster on television from a first person perspective, they'll get ill. They just can't watch it. They're like, oh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get sick watching this. And why some people did get sick when you even watching things like if you sat in the first five rows watching the Blair Witch Project. It's uh, we we seem to be. It's not just that we're living inside a um, a state, a sound stage, or a planetarium, a terrarium. It's we were designed to be in here, and I, 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 I I'm never. I don't think I, I, I'm not going to back down on that anytime soon. Anyway, any shout outs you would like to give before I send you off? Uh, well, uh, just shout out to anyone doing their part and putting out the truth. Right on, man. Keep, keep it up. And feel free, by the way, after you watch a bunch of videos, you know I do this show every week, give me a call. Uh, or you can, you know, the, the same number works. It just goes to my computer. So okay. uh, you can you can buzz me whenever. Um, email me also if you have questions. But watch videos first before because you're going to have a whole bunch of questions. You're going to be going through a big question and answer period. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. All right, man. Oh, I got another call coming in. So I got to go, but I will talk to you soon, okay? 
All right. All right. Bye-bye. 318 area code. 318 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you and why are you interrupting my emails? I uh I don't want you to get through this email, so I'm trying to be the next one. Really? Guy. Is that what everybody's doing tonight? They they're, they're yeah. <laughs> How is this happening? I've only I, got like well, three sentences left in this email. I'm gonna feel bad for the guy that wrote it to me because I'm sure he's like, oh, he's never gonna finish. So what uh, um, what's what's going on? I uh man, I have been watching Infinite Plain Society way too much. So I had a question for you. Yeah. Um apparently in, in two thousand six there was a technology created um for artificial stars. You heard of that? Oh, you mean the um, the the sound bouncing the high frequency sound in the liquid when the um, the the what do they call it um, soul luminescence something like that was that what you're talking uh, about? Well, maybe, but basically, uh, there's a there's an, uh, a huge teles- telescope in Germany that they have, and they have designed a laser, and they're they're shooting this thing. Anywhere from ninety to ninety kilometers, and they're they're actually presenting a star. And it, you know, to anybody else that's looking at it, it actually just looks like a star. But they're they're putting it out there; it's artificial. Oh, I wouldn't. Doesn't surprise me at all, man. Uh, I mean, think of the, think of it this way: we can do, and people just they they don't expand their minds quickly enough. And that is, look, we can do almost everything on a smaller scale. So when you go to a planetarium, a really good planetarium, like say the Hayden Planetarium, the one that NDT runs, if you didn't know any better, if you didn't know that you were in it, you would look up and say, wow, those stars look pretty realistic. And so do those planets. And so does that comet. Uh, to do it on a much larger scale, like what you're talking about, creating star, you know, stars at 90 kilometers away, yeah, well, more power, better project- projection system. Sure, we've got the tech. It doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Well, what what really was was crazy to me is, I mean, they're they're bouncing, you know, uh, this this laser off of of, of sodium, um, and so and they're 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 reacting the sodium and it's making it glow, and that's how they produce, that's how they produce a star. Interesting. So when you think of when you think of sodium, what's that? That that's salt. When you think of salt, you think of seawater. So sure. I mean that kind of gives that kind of gives credence to, you know, enclosedworld.com. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I absolutely. In fact, the article the peanut gallery just sent me the article. It's at newsscientist.com. That's the first one anyway, and it's called "Enormous Laser Beam Produces Artificial Star." And yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's that's great. I have not read that one yet, but I'm I'm going to when I when I get a chance. All right, man. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? You too. Okay, bye-bye. 850, area code. Oop, and I just missed 850. Darn it. I tried to click. 850, call, in, call back in. You get a chance, and I will, I will pick you up, I swear to God. I know it's a delay. When I say that, there's like a five-second delay at the... Oh, ooh, can I finish the email? Hang on. Uh, I appreciate you and Patricia Steer more than you can know, and I pray for both... For you both, blessings follow you through the tough times to come. Sincerely, Randolph Kane. Hey, I finished it. And it only took me three segments, and I didn't even get through the Flat Earth News. Okay, so I'm waiting for 850-850 to call in. And in the meantime, I can. what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Flat Earth into YouTube. And I'm going to set the filter to one week and see what's out there. The Flat Earth whack a <laughs> Uh, podcast marathon. I Antonio Superats is doing this thing and it is going crazy. No, I did not do that on purpose, Peanut Gallery. I swear to God, 850, I tried to pick him up and he hung up by that time. Uh, let's see. Flat Earth Clues interview 108 into the paranormal radio. I don't usually promote my own stuff, but David Weiss was on with me and that was great. We were on paranormal radio and not a single person called in, not a single troll. It was supposed to be a troll show. We were just going to fend off trolls because they could not get – they couldn't even get a single scientist to go against us. Last year, we were supposed to have Richard Hoagland and Mark D'Antonio, and we ended up getting Mark D'Antonio and Brian Dunning 
and I'll never work with Brian Dunning again, not because he's a bad guy, but because it's, he has no credibility. The guy went to prison for fraud. He embezzled from eBay. That's not very fun. So let's see, 850, nope, not there. And then Peanut Gallery did them purpose to try to finish the, no, 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 no. Okay, Globusters, who called the ball? Uh, nope, that's not even, eight. I don't even know who this is. This is 814 area code. Let's try them. 814 area code, you are on live with Strange World. Who are you and why are we, what are we talking about? Hey, Mark, this is uh, Don Gable. I'm from uh, Lake City, PA. I'm right up by the uh, Lake Erie. Right on. What uh, What's on your mind this evening? Uh, I listened to you guys last night on uh, Jaren's show all night, and then, uh, but you just kind of mentioned what I was um, going to talk to you about, mm-hmm. about Antonio. You just saw his thing on the YouTube search there. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know what he's been doing lately? Do you have any idea? Have you uh, unfortunately, I have been so unbelievably busy that I have a hard time even following all the, the, the Flat Earth Hangouts. Why? What's he been up to? Uh, well, I guess, you know, the biggest thing with the uh, Flat Earth models of the actual layout of how the continents are, uh, nobody really knows how they're laid out. So right. what An- Antonio's doing is he's doing the 24-hour solar noon search, where at his time in England, I believe he's at, he starts it, he gets his little um, sundial out, yeah. and they use the specific dimensions and everything, they measure it, and they find a solar noon and they mark it. And then he, what he does is he has people around the world for the next 24 hours reporting in with their test results. So oh. he can track the sun as it goes around the earth in 24 hours. Cool. And then with that, he's using that to correct the positions of all the continents around the world to get a more accurate uh, map layout. Right on. And he's... He's done it, uh, well, just last month for the spring equinox and solstice or whatever. And then uh, he was going to do another one for summer, but he decided to do one this weekend. <laughs> so he's been trying to find people in all the countries around the world to get a more accurate uh, compilation for this weekend. Yeah. So I'm going to hopefully uh, get into his thing this weekend for my area because they awesome. didn't have any data for uh east coast last time they had a couple out of canada and california hawaii australia new zealand that so he's, he's he's already seen that there is problem with the maps and so he's using all this data him and that dr zach you know who tries to triangulate the position of the sun by the same system sure so that's what that's what you're trying to do so i just want to get the word out and they just mentioned you tonight on their uh uh, hangout they were just having. I was listening to them, and I had to finally go off and catch your show while it started. Oh, so so that's what he's trying to do is uh, get a, a more accurate map depicted of. Oh, cool. Earth. Yeah, and I do remember that he was working on the map. I didn't know that that what he was doing recently though was was tied to that. So great, that's fantastic, and yeah, more power was, to him. So yeah, if he, he just mentioned your name tonight on his podcast about you know trying to get you. Um, to at least kind of get the word out that they're doing this because I don't think he has enough people around the world to really fine tune this. But sure. Like he's doing more, but he's got all the instructions on some of his websites. On a- anyone wants to find out, go to Antonio Subarat's YouTube. YouTube channel, and and his last name is spelled S U B I R A T S, and check it out. And and hopefully, again, I'd love to love to see. Hopefully, he doesn't go crazy like Tiger Dan did when he when he tried to rework the map. Well, but, he's already got a couple of them uh, figured up, and then since his one from last month, he's looking at it and says, well, I can already see that you know Africa and that's got to be moved, and this place has got to be moved, and it, it's really interesting. And, awesome. I mean, it's, he's doing it wherever he can get the points of interest. So That's great. The more the merrier. And there's okay. several of them working together at it. So hopefully it's going to stay sunny this weekend because I live up here by Lake Erie, and it's never sunny. <laughs> I have a hard time finding the sun, but I've already managed to track uh, solar noon, get an idea where it was last week. I had one day, and tomorrow's supposed to be nice. I'm going to try it again. So. Nice. But, hopefully, but they're also, uh, to, to keep it from being uh, people faking it, they want you to be out there with your camera phone, video recording this, and, and contact them, and they'll put you on live so they can watch it as you do it. And then, you know, they want you to do like a half hour, 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after, so you can catch. They're going by solar noon, not magnetic north. The first one they did was magnetic north. They turned the compass so it's magnetic north and then track the sun at, at 
their particular time, but they're finding out that those aren't as accurate. So now they want you to keep plotting it, plotting it, plotting it until you find the shortest distance of the shadow to represent your solar noon. Sure. So they're trying to get a more accurate reading. So it's pretty interesting. I, awesome. That's that great. Cool. So, but yeah, I started looking into this stuff oh, not even four months ago. So like you said, it's been four months of video after video. After yeah. Video. So oh, I, I'm so jealous of people that are getting into it now because there's so much content. Yeah. It's got to be overwhelming, but it's got to be really exciting too. I can't believe how many just pop up every day. Yeah. But what really irritates me is people keep uh, reposting all the videos I'll go look at a video and it's a repost. I'm like, oh, man, put it in the credits, you know, that this is a repost. I like, know. Get but tired of catching and looking at the same ones all the time. I mean, so. imitation is the most sincere form of flattery and so is replication. I understand what they're doing, but yep. I, I, I prefer it if they put in a note that, you know, this is so-and-so's. But I know. credit at least, but just so I'm not, you know, clicking on the same video over and yep. over and over again. It's like, <laughs> so. yep. But otherwise, I think you guys are doing great work. So. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right, man. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? You too, Mark. Thanks. Right. Good night. Bye-bye. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And let's keep going with Flat Earth News just a little bit more because there was quite a few things that happened out there. I was on Jaren's show last night, so myself, Jaren, and Missa discussed Flat Earth on Jaronism Raw. They posted that. Flat Earth Asshole, Advanced Theories. That was out a day ago. It's got 12,000 hits. Awesome. Uh, Jaronism did another thing. There's 416 area code. Let's see. He's been calling a few times. 416, you are on live with Strange World right now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. How you doing? You know, I can't complain. But if I did... um. Someone might care, I think. Where where are you calling from? Toronto. I'm sorry, where? Toronto. Toronto. Ontario. Canada. Canada. Right on. <laughs> oh man, it's good to talk to you. Hey, do you you know you're on the show, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. I saw have you been buzzing in like how many times did you call? Like five, six times? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. What's uh what's okay. on, what's on your mind this evening from Toronto? Home, home of Scott Pilgrim, the movie, by the way. There you go. Thank you. Um, okay. So I've been following this flat earth stuff for a long time now. <laughs> okay. You know, how long has it been? Uh, way way wow. back in the olden days of two years ago, <laughs> we okay, had so. wagons <laughs> and made fire by rubbing wood together. So anyway, so you've been following Flat Earth for a while. I know it seems like a longer time. It's like dog years, Flat Earth years. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, I've done like all the research I, I can, and I'm trying, you know, to find a way to approach my family with this. And this is the real dilemma that I'm having. Okay. How do you do that, you know? Come at them sideways. It's the only thing you can do. Okay, uh, okay I'll... But that... I have a little, I have a little boy and a little girl, right? Okay. My wife is a, my wife is a teacher. Oh boy. Exactly. That, and I, I came out her sideways, like about a, about a week ago, and she totally ripped my head off. <laughs> what does she, what, what does she teach? In primary, intermediate, high school? Uh, kindergarten. Oh boy. It's rough. Uh, well, yeah, of course she's going to go after you, man. I mean, she's an she's an educator. I mean, she's got her what? Is she a full blown educator? I mean, does she have a master's in education? Uh, TDSB and in, in oh, right, right, because you guys do something different. The um, yeah. but yeah, you gotta. You can just be you. You gotta. All right, let's you know put it what this I mean? way. No, that's a tricky situation. Oh, absolutely, it's tricky. I, I believe me. Every time that I have somebody that says they're homeschooling their kids, and they say, "What should I do?" and I say, "Look, you're going to have to tell them both things, unless you, you know." But when you do, you know, don't be surprised at the reaction you're going to get. That's outside. Be, you know, teach yeah. them, teach them both. Teach them. But look, some people think it's a globe. Some people think it's flat. You decide. And, uh, and in fact, that's what the peanut gallery just said just now. Kids should learn. What did he say? 
So he goes, explain theory from fact to your children. Kids should learn all theories until proven fact. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, it's until, it's it's until rough. You're I know. actually in that situation, and then they're like, "You can't say that." Well, I know. Well, well, look what happened. That that sounds like. Well, you want to parallel? That sounds like what happened with Kyrie when he was at the All Star game when he had the the reporter from USA Today, and or is it USA Network? Doesn't really matter. Who came at him and was basically hinting without trying to be mean in public? It's like, look, you have a responsibility to tell people what science, you know, science, you know, the the mainstream view. You can't right. you can't start talking about this. You have kids that look up to you, and it's like, why not? Why can't I tell talk about this? It's like, well, because it just simply isn't done. You know, the the social norm, the the social decorum, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I, I, know. I know. The majority is what the majority is, and the majority of people out there still believe what we believe what what the world is presented to us. So I'm, I'm sorry that she went off on you, but it's not the first time I've heard this. You know, the, oh yeah, no, no. I, hey, I'm just like I want to, you know, talk to the people that I can't really talk to in normal day life, you know, and it means a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, tell you what, let's let's pick this up. Uh, I don't want to hang up in yet. We'll talk right after the break. Stay for three minutes, okay? Okay, sounds good. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. T L R. gallery i am not singing that song it is just not happening i cannot pull off joe jackson anyway uh, this is a strange world you've been listening to part four of four this is show 99 next week will be the big old show 100 i don't know if i'm gonna do anything special for it and yes that was joe jackson stepping out from his album night and day do we have toronto still on the phone yeah you still do Perfect. All right. Yeah. So you mentioned to your wife, who's an educator, that you were into flat Earth, and did you do this in front of the children? Uh, no. We were just chilling out watching TV. I'm like, you know what? We may want to try and look at this, and it didn't quite work out. Uh, <laughs> so was good. it? Was it like? Was that knee jerk? It's like, what? Are you insane? Yeah. You haven't actually told this to other people, have you? Holy crap! I married an idiot. One of those things. Yeah, it, it was it was kind of like that, and and I mean we're really good with each other, like, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, like, yeah. But again, know, that like, that, that shows almost the... broke out into the I'm like, I can't believe this. Yeah. Why, why won't you just listen? Just listen to me and, and just like try and try and understand. It's just, it could be another reasoning, and you know, and it was just crazy. Oh yeah, and she's like, no, no. I'm not, I don't have to look at it because science has already shown us for 400 years and then, and changed that it's a globe. It's a globe. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. We have pictures from space. We have, we have satellites. We have curved shadows on the moon. We have sticks and shadows. All this other crap. I know. I know the arguments. Mark, I, I got, I got to bring up another point though. Yeah. Okay. And when I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm listening to this and uh, a lot of times religion is coming up. And you're like, okay, well, no, obviously now that we, or we think we understand it, that there's got to be a God, there's got to be something that's, you know, that's created us. I'm like, really? But Well, I mean, at the it, very it, least, I mean, you know, you've heard my speech. It's like, look, it either God made this or God sub, subcontracted out the work. Meaning, at the very least, is there's a technology, there's a civilization that's bigger and better than us. That's... Oh, but, okay, oh, all right, okay. Stop, stop right there. Yeah. But what if it's not? 
what if it's like I have a fish tank upstairs. I, I I had sea monkeys when I was growing up. Yeah. And obviously there was somebody that was making that happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it, maybe it's not like some over. Oh, like, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, if you're, if, yeah, I'm not going to get into the defining God argument, but you're absolutely right. I mean, some people have said, is this a fish tank? Is this an experiment? Is this a terrarium? Is this is is this something that's not necessarily divine, but is something more? Um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Benign in nature, where it's like, oh yeah, we're just a bunch of tarantulas, and there's a heat lamp, and you know we're in here with our rocks. Okay. You know? Oh yeah, I, 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 I don't want, I, I, and I hate, I don't want to, I don't want to believe in that. I'm just like, oh, it's where, it's of course. Where, it's, where you guys get, like? It's I, I'm missing that. Where, where, why can't I, I I I get that? Like where. There's like, oh, there's got to be like a divine being. The, the, reason, the reason, though, that, that the religion gets brought into it as much as it does is because that's, again, you know, the, out of the main five religions that are out there that make up 80% of our population, everyone's been looking. Now, remember, all the religions are looking for proof of a higher power. That's what they've been looking for. And regardless of how this thing gets manifested, if it is a wall, you know, if there's a if there's a barrier, if there's a dome out there, a firmament, anyone that's in, and I can't really speak for, speak for necessarily Buddhism, but but the others will look at it and say, "Well, oh, it was divinely made," because that's what they've been waiting for. You know, that's it's the that that's why they latch on to it so much. And look, Christianity. The, the the website by Rob Skiba, you know, testingtheglobe.com, there's a lot of chapter and verse in there. Does it absolutely prove the flat earth? No, but it certainly leans to it a lot further than it does towards the globe. And that's that's why. So I I get you. I totally get you, man. But at the same time, you got to remember the people that are around you. You know, yeah, you you may look at it and say, well, what if what if we're just, you know, spiders <laughs> in a big tank sure, yeah. which, which hey, is possible did you uh did you see uh true the earth's asshole's last video uh i didn't watch all of it i was i was kind of skimming through it because there's so much stuff out there why what what was he oh yeah he was talking about the different models potential models yeah yeah no no he was he was just saying you know what if you don't believe like there's a dome that's okay if you don't believe there's like a permanent or and it, it's, it's, it's all right. Like you don't have to do that. Let's not fight each other over this stuff. Right. Let's just believe. <laughs> oh yeah. You know? I, I absolutely. And I, you, you've heard my stuff where I've said, look, the greatest thing about the flat earth community is that we're like a bunch of clans out in, Oh boy, that's Scotland, right? Scotland has the clans, And it, it, and with all these different banners and flags, right? And everyone, one's got a dome on it. One's got an infinite plane on it. One's got a, a diamond shape on it. Everybody's got their thing. But the one thing we can agree on is on the other side of the field, they've only got one flag, which is the globe. And so, yeah, of course, there's some infighting and some rivalry and, and people disagreeing and squaring off. But in the, in the ultimate battle against the globe, that part we're winning. So I don't mind. I, again, sometimes the enthusiasm, you know, again, like different teams, red team, blue team, green team, the, as long as we're on the same, you know, we're on more or less the same page, the battle's going to be won. And now, of course, once we get over there, we, we still got to figure out what it is. But that's, I, I don't, I don't necessarily mind it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some guys take it too far, but doesn't that happen in real life anyway? You know, yeah, yeah it, for sure. I, I just thought he, he did a he did a really good job of just saying like we don't have to agree on everything. Yeah, you know there there could be differences. Oh, of course, I, I I've I've said many times that if if one if like like if, if it turns out there's no dome whatsoever, I will not lose an ounce of sleep because I have done my part to take this thing as far as I can and whatever it is I again I won't lose sleep it's the people on the other side that are going to lose sleep you're an astrophysicist you're going to become an alcoholic almost immediately because you you're not going to be able to deal with it all your education was wasted unfortunately uh, but on well, our I'll, side I'll, no. I'm 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 going to leave just leave it on on this note I think and I I'm I'm pretty sure we, it's going to have to come to a point now 
where technology is reaching everybody's hands, yeah, where something is going to happen. I agree. And you know, some, somebody's going to have the technology to send a balloon up with something new that's going to boost it up to an extra level that is just going to prove everything. And yeah. that this is and, this is what I, and I I I was uh, patience is not my biggest virtue, and I think you're absolutely right. And that was I would have thought that you know television would have been enough to reach the masses. No, it wasn't. And then modem, you know, the slow internet. Nope. High speed internet. Nope. Not good enough. Not until you had social media where everyone was carrying around miniature computers in their hands that they were addicted to at all times. Once that happened, then yes. So now, and that's to get the story straight. That's always the the biggest thing when you're when you're trying to pull something like this. And you've got to get the story straight. So when this moment happens that you're talking about, it is broadcast to everybody simultaneously and everybody within less than 30 minutes. And by that, you know, that's for people that don't have their phones on or in a meeting or something. Everybody within 30 minutes in every country, every industrialized country, know whatever it is immediately. And yeah. that, yeah, that's, that's that's what I'm waiting yeah. for. Something something new, something big that's tech-based. You're absolutely right. Anyway. Anyway, I'm looking at the chat channel, and there's a lot of people that want to get through, so I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna let you go, but yeah, thank you so much, man. That was so so fun. Oh, hey, ha- happy to take your call, man, and and uh, call back soon. Yeah, we'll do. All, All right, right, have fun in Toronto. We'll do. Bye, bye, chat channel. <laughs> I know I don't go into the chat channels because I'm a one man deal here, and I know eventually we're gonna have to get people in the chat channel. And Peanut Gallery says, "Hope you don't mean the American clans." Well, you know, but like for example, we you know we have people, we have riots that break out in soccer games in Europe, and people die, and those are just fans fighting in the stands. Those aren't even the players in the field. It's you know, it's not like Roman gladiator times. Anyway, oh, uh, real quick before the next call comes in, whoever's going to call, the, anyone that wants to have some fun, torment free talk radio. Just type that in flat Earth free talk radio. They 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 do a video podcast and the flat earthers have been calling in just torturing those guys i think we should torture them until they become flat earthers 612 area code 612 area code who are you then turn down your radio behind because i can hear the echo 612 are you there i can hear something in the background but i can't hear you is your mute button on there we go there you go. That's that better. better. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Where are you? Yeah, this is Wes. How oh, you wait, doing? Wes? From Flat Earth News Talk. Uh, yeah, I've seen your video. Awesome. I love that. Uh, hopefully, they're going to do something about it, you know, investigate. Uh, and I'm talking about the video you posted recently. <clears throat> where they had mentioned your name and oh well no no we, 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 we already we already figured out that mystery do you know who that is oh, did they? yeah the the so the no, guy I, that, I, I i tuned into the show a little late that's okay uh what happened was in fact i bob from globebusters contacted me almost immediately he goes he goes you know who that is it's like darn it bob oh, scooped i have no clue that is infinite plane society really yeah Oh, yeah. wow. I, I didn't think he even liked me. or who, So who knows why he was doing that. But yeah, so he shows up at the council meeting and says that his name is Mark Sargent and then starts talking about uh, fake ISS stuff and fake NASA stuff. And and I wrote the video. I was like, well, hey, thanks. Whoever dropped my name, anyone else wants to do that and say I'm Mark Sargent, that's fine. I don't I don't mind because I'm it on video enough. People are going to know it's not me. That's but, funny. But if you want to use me as an alias, <laughs> sure. Wait, wait, what's, what's the worst that could happen? And of course, don't rob a bank and say, Mark Sargent robbed this bank. <laughs> blam, blam, blam. Shoot your way out. Don't do that. But Oh, no doubt. Because no one's going to believe that anyway. It's like, dude, I'm up in yeah. camp. I'm not down in St. Louis, Missouri, robbing a bank. The right. uh, Anyway, so, but yeah, well, don't worry. You know, I'm, I, but yeah, I thought it was a mystery too. And then I, the mystery lasted all of about 30 minutes. And then, uh, <laughs> Bob yeah. Um, now with the other guy who just called in and was talking about the uh, um, 
uh, when when you guys started talking about oh, his you wife. know maybe were a bunch of spiders in the box and oh yeah, yeah 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 and all I could think of every time you you throw that analogy out I all I think of is the MIB you know, Men in Black yeah. at the end of the movie and the aliens throwing in the marbles that are oh, yeah. are got galaxies in it and they're putting it into a bag and then of course in the next MIB you know he's kicking out a door and it's actually a locker and there's these giant <laughs> And it's yep. like that's that's the only thing I could. Oh yeah, you, reference. You, you're spot on there, and that is I have said that this world can only be one of two when it comes to motivation. Can only be one of two options: one that we're a box of kittens that they want to protect us from from something bad, or that we're right. a box of scorpions that they don't want ever to get out and run amok. And exactly. I'm leaning on the scorpion side because we tend to do a lot of bad things. I mean, really, I mean, look what we do to each other. And, exactly. And so, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll have to see which, which one it turns out to be. But, heck, even in our own science fiction novels and movies, going all the way back to the original The Day the Earth Stood Still, that was the whole message of The Day the Earth Stood Still. They said, look, the aliens showed up and they said, you guys are never going to be allowed to leave this place. The way you are now, sure. because in fact, we're thinking of knocking you back to the Stone Age because you're just too savage. And ever, how many movies have we seen that? They say that, in fact, they use that word time and time again. Human beings are savage. We, we tend right. to do things, you know, for our own self-interest. We, you know, things are fine. The, the line is, and I'll use the line from the Heath Ledger Batman movie where Heath Ledger was the, that brilliant joker. And he goes that he goes, you wait. He goes, when the chips are down, these people, they'll eat each other. You know, basically mm-hmm. telling Batman, it's like, who are you trying to defend? These guys, when things get ba- really bad, will tear each other apart. So why are you, why are you protecting them? So mm-hmm. anyway. Oh, yeah. And then uh, yeah. Peanut Gallery says the Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, that was the new Twilight Zone episode where the aliens – yeah, where they misinterpreted that that we thought they they wanted us to be more peaceful, and actually they wanted us to be more warlike. Who knows? We may right. be a, we may be a war race. Who knows? So. I know. I know they. Um, uh, not to get off. Well, actually, I'm getting off subject. Um, it's too bad you you missed the uh, uh, popping in on Sunday with uh, Mark from New York uh, Zulu one. Oh no no. Um, it, oh, it's no big deal. I know that you're busy as hell. Well, um, well wasn't that? I get, you, I get you, know, that. you realize the first message you sent me was 7.30 in the morning on a Sunday. I was asleep. <laughs> and I know that I'm on West Coast, and you're probably not on West yeah. Coast. But I no, was, by the I'm, time I'm I woke up, I, I didn't even even op- turn on my computer till like 9. And then it's like, right. okay, what? So, so if you want me to be on something, you got to give me at least 24 hours notice. Cause that well, I did. I gave, you, I gave you a week's notice. I told you we were going to do it again. <laughs> well, you didn't. S- but it's okay. Right. It's not. It's not a big deal. Don't worry All about right. it. Um, but I did. But I did do a rant um, because Zulu had. To, he was really busy. And oh, by the way, Zulu One is doing a ta- that test tomorrow. So if anyone wants to get a hold of them, uh, Zulu One, spelled out Z O Z U L U. Um, oh. Oh, oh, one, uh, you know what I mean. Right. Oh, actually, it's uh, Z-U-L-U-O-N-E-0-1 at yahoo.com. Okay. Anyone who wants to get a hold of him, get a hold of him. He wants to do a triangulation of the sun. He's doing that tomorrow, I believe. Um, But the other thing is that when I... He had to go real quick, so I and David Weiss popped in a little for a short bit, but it, I wasn't even on my air at the time. Uh, but he said that he would try to get back if he could, and he couldn't. Um, so I went ahead and I just threw up some a video, and I drew up uh, some stuff from um, the NASA channel. Um, anyhow, uh, he he went off, and I don't know if you've seen it yet or not, but. Um, Oh, Matt's um, thing where he was doing Matt, the stick. Matt Boylan went he, off on the stick thing and stick, just it, yeah, the sticks and shadows argument. Yeah, and I yeah. was actually happy because I I do watch some of Matt's things because I I still have faith that he'll gain more focus. And it was it was oh, good. Yeah. I loved I loved just the raw enthusiasm when he finally did the sticks and shadows argument for himself. 
and realized, yeah, he went, he went ape crazy. I know he did. I loved it. Five minutes in. And it's like, holy smokes. But yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been talking about this one for a while because mainstream science, uh, heck, um, Vsauce said that in in that big video that's got like 14 million hits where the sticks and shadow argument works, but it's not an absolute meaning. Yeah. If the sun's 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands. And not only that, he wasn't, and the guy wasn't even doing that for that reason. He wasn't trying to prove the globe. He was trying to do his astronomical thing to find out how high the sun was. Right. That's one thing that was left off in the uh, history books. Yeah, I I know, I know. But again, so. people people assume what if you repeat again, not to not to use the Hitler reference, but if you repeat something yeah. and do it with conviction enough times, there's a chunk of the population that's going to believe you. And in this right. case, uh, it's like they all they had to do was I wasn't kidding when I said that when you try to prove the globe without using NASA. People start scrambling because nobody remembers the experiments. They'll they'll use yeah. like the ships going over the horizon. Really, what's the name of the experiment? What year was it done? That's a trick question because there never was one. Uh, you know, same thing with sticks and shadows. Nobody remembers that experiment. They'll they'll say, well, crescent shapes on the moon. It's like really, is that actually an experiment or is that just something you noticed? It's it's right. It's my <clears throat> well, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a week's notice. Um, I'm doing another show. I'm gonna do it every Sunday. So you're more than welcome to pop in. Okay. Trying to get Patricia to come as well, but of course you know as I do, she's not showing up unless you're there. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I won't be able to do it every Sunday. I mean, because there's no, no, no. Whenever but, you but can, will... it's going to be an open invitation. Okay, I'll send it to you hours before it starts. All right, my my only recommendation to you is, and I, if you don't care, you don't care. But. Well, I'm trying to get people to schedule their things to where, and I know it's kind of tough, but if you see some other big channels that are doing hangouts at the same time. Right. Don't do it during the Don't do it yeah, because you're just, you're just running over each other. And, and yep. it's going to happen anyway. There's going to be competition. I mean, right. hey, super happy that, that there's multiple Flat Earth hangouts happening all the time <laughs> now. But, hey, 651 right. area code, I swear I'll pick you up as soon as I'm done with this. Yeah, I'm, I got to get going. I'm sneaking this at work again. Okay. So, hey, you have <laughs> a good right, rest Mark, of your night, though. Sure. Okay? All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. All right, 651, last chance to call in. You will be the last call of the night. As soon as. All right, that one's gone. 651 area code. Try to call in one more time. I will wait for you, whoever you are. In the meantime, can I read my second email? I don't think so. Nope, seven oh uh, shoot, six five I've got to pick up seven oh one. All right, let's see if we can do it quick. Seven oh one area code, you got two minutes. <laughs> who who, who are you? Sergeant. This is the Megaphone Man. I'm also called Naysay. I'm a co host with Phoenix on Phoenix Rising. Oh, cool. And uh, I'm calling you out. I would love to debate you, Mark Sergeant. <laughs> All right. Send me an email. Do you have my contact information? I just got it this evening, but I'd love to debate you with Jaredism and his beautiful wife also. Okay. I'd like you to have more people on your side than just me on my side. Oh, all right. Sounds good. Email me, msergeant23 at comcast.net, and I will see what I can do. And then if you could, please, in the meantime, look at how birds see. Birds, I'm sorry, birds what? How birds' vision works. You mean like how they, they navigate through the air type thing? Yes, because birds see on a different spectrum, on a visual spectrum. Okay. And so then if you look at how birds, the mechanics of how the bird's eyes work, and then look up field shift of blue shift and red shift. Okay. All right. And, I, and, and if you have any, li- if you have any links on this, also send. That would be very helpful. All right, beautiful. I'll get a hold of you, and I enjoy your show. Love it. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. You have but good... I, am, I am a sphere believer. Not a globe, but I believe in a sphere. All right. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Send me your stuff when you can, okay? You bet. Toodles. Okay, bye-bye. Did you just say toodles? That's all right. All right, 651. You got four minutes till the show ends. Do what you can. And Peanut Gallery says they see on the UV spectrum, the birds. All right. Well, look into it. I mean, 
nobody's brought it up yet. 651 area code. I know there's going to be a little bit of delay. Can I? I'm never going to finish this second email. This one's called Satellite Math Rework. Mark came across this old forum debating the existence of satellites. It gets real interesting and immediately, admittedly far too technical for me. On page 11, where a poster seems to nail down a perfectly reasonable seeming explanation on how supposed satellite data streams need to be nothing more than radio waves bounced off the ionosphere. Mind you, it's all done under the assumption of a globe, and I'm aware of the idea that on a flat earth, simple line of sight towers would have had much further transmitting distance, etc. but I'd be interested to see some of their calculations of signal, signal bouncing reworked with a plane in mind, especially when it comes to figuring out where the signals originate. Again, it's really technical, but maybe you would know someone in the flat earth community or reach out to one that could pour over it with new eyes. Thanks much, Brandon. And there's a link to it somewhere. And I will send – yeah, I'll send it to the peanut gallery as soon as I'm done with that. But so, yeah, I got through two, two, two emails this entire evening. Thank you, everyone who called so far. And thank you for the – we got eh, 90 seconds. So what we're going to do is unless that 651 calls in, we're going to do the wrap-up now and then maybe say goodbye to 651, maybe like have him roll the show out. We'll see. Remember, Flat Earth Conference coming up in November. That's November 9th and 10th in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can check that out at fe2017.com. I am going to be tomorrow, like last night I was on Jaron's show, and tomorrow I'm going to be with Patricia Steer on Flat Earth and other hot potatoes at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, right on YouTube on her channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. You'll get to see me on video, which is not – I hate watching myself on video. It's one of the only shows I can't watch. 601 area code. Okay. 601 area code. You got 30 seconds. Then we're show is going to end. All right, Mark. I'm a big fan of yours. How are you tonight? Cool. I, I'm great. Um, I hate I called at the end of the show. I'd actually dialed the other number that was on your website. Uh, quick. I'll try you back next time, but if this conference is successful, and I think it will be, what are the plans for the future? I'll hang up and listen. Oh, Thank you. Bye. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, the plans for the future after the conference, we're just going to keep doing more, but I think we're going to hit critical mass by then because the media will come to this thing because of what, what has happened so far. Uh, at this point, I am looking for the 100th monkey effect. That is my ultimate goal. I have said this since the beginning, which is I believe human beings also follow the 100th monkey effect rule which is when enough people figure it out, they will uh, – it will spread to everybody and then it won't be a laughable thing. It won't even be a debatable thing. It will be something that we just know for sure and then the whole thing, we either go roll into a p- potentially a brand new golden age or some sort of tragic ending. But I'm, I'm willing to, to take that chance because really how worse could it get from now? Um, Ten Commandments, I don't know them all by heart, but I try to tell people, treat others better than treat yourself. The world would be a better place. And hey, you know what? We will see you guys uh, next week. Same flat time, same flat channel. And we're just going to keep taking more calls next week, 720-897-6111. And hey, it was fun, wasn't it? Calls, wall to wall. We'll do it again soon, I promise. Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? (laughs) I had to make a new one. What are you doing?